everything I've seen is that it's about democracy. Every single thing that I've read. So many of those members are either members that are in uh, districts where they're hearing from their constituents that that January 6th was not good, that they're in favor of a strong party, they're in favor of strong democracy. And and many of them, too, have served our country. And, and how could they possibly have served and then also say it's OK to support a candidate who, by all accounts, had a, a big role in what happened in the Capitol on January 6th? Mm-hmm. Imagine being Matt, a, it's interesting a Capitol to police me. officer. Go ahead, Lisa. Imagine yeah. being a cap- Joe, imagine being a Capitol police officer and happen- having to welcome the speaker into the building in the morning, knowing that he had something to do with all the things that happened to their counterparts. I can't get over that. I can't get my head wrapped around that. I can't imagine how they do their job every day. Well, it was amazing to me to hear folks close to Mike Pence, for instance, who said, we, you know, we disagreed with him on that. But Mick Mulvaney yesterday, who quit the administration over the events of January 6th, uh, said that's something that happened in the past, essentially. We're worried about what happens the next two to three months. Matt Bennett, what would that mean for the House of Representatives with regard to that singular issue, January 6th, if it were a Speaker Jordan? I mean, it would be a horror show. Um, When you become a member of Congress, you swear an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution, not anything else, the Constitution of the United States. And nothing was under more direct assault on January 6th than our Constitution and the constitutional provision for how we transfer power in this country. Jim Jordan took an ax to that. And the fact that he might be handed one of the most powerful positions in our government is nothing short of absolutely appalling. And Democrats are going, I mean, look, House Democrats are are going to be in the position of having to decide, do we do anything at all with this guy? Because for a time after January 6th, House Democrats didn't want to deal with any of the Republicans who had voted uh, after the assault on the Capitol, who had voted not to to certify the election. Jordan did way more than that. I mean, he encouraged the assault itself. So this is going to be a very, very difficult time for Congress if this happens. Well, how about the matter of certification on its own, Lisa? Uh, Would a Speaker Jordan certify the 2024 election if Donald Trump lost? Well, that's a great question. I have no idea, Joe. I mean, honestly, I think that's he would a problem. have to, right? Yeah, he would absolutely have to because this isn't this is a this isn't a big role. He's third in line to the presidency. Uh, this all of the factors that go into the power that is the office of the speaker is is of great concern. And I would hope that he would take this oath seriously. And he would certify the election and would do the right thing. But his past behavior has shown that he would not. And that's of concern not only to the Democratic Party. It's to, of concern to Republicans like myself who still believe in the Constitution and, and, the, um, and the foundations of this country. Yeah. Uh, can I make a point about that, Joe, though? Yeah, go well, ahead. I very much agree with Lisa and, and I'm grateful to her and other Republicans who believe in the Constitution. Um, It is not at all clear that Jim Jordan would be speaker on January 6th of 2025. The speaker will be chosen by the next Congress, not this one, the one elected in 2024. They will be sworn in three days prior. And if they pick Jim Jordan as their speaker, I would put a lot of money on Democrats taking control of the House. 